All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. I am coming in hot today. To all of you that are noticing the difference, you and me both. I completely forgot that I shaved my beard last night and I woke up to quite a surprise when I looked in the mirror this morning. But nonetheless, here we are, episode 44, The Egyptian Pyramid, Chemical Engineering, Fertilizers, part two. So in today's episode, I will be explaining the applications for the ammonium bicarbonate that was once being produced inside the bent pyramid of Dashur. I will also be revealing the esoteric interpretation of the deity Amon. You heard that correctly. Amon is not a god. It is a representation of a chemical. I will also continue to incorporate the elemental spectrum that was discovered in the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining into the function of the Egyptian pyramids. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we aren't just looking at extrusions of strontium. So in part one of the chemical analysis, I revealed the composition of these samples. And in part two, I will be explaining exactly why those elements are there and much more. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and stay tuned. Now, if you haven't seen that episode, the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining, this is an absolute must watch and I will put a link in the video description below. Now, on to a pretty major announcement. Check out my second appearance with Sam Tripoli. So my first one was on his premium podcast, Only Conspiracies. This time, finally on the big show, the Tinfoil Hat Podcast, now available on Rockfin. This may be my most comprehensive presentation to date, and I had an absolutely awesome time talking with Johnny, XG, and Sam. So shout out to the boys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Link in the video description below. To all the new subscribers who made your way over here from watching that podcast, The Swarm, I definitely see you and welcome to the land of Chem. What you saw on that show was just the tip of the iceberg. So buckle your seatbelts and without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with today's episode. So in the previous video, I explained the applications for the aqueous ammonia solution that was once being produced inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur, which you can see here in the foreground of this picture from my 2020 research expedition to Egypt. And it had just rained, which was a very unusual experience and made for an extremely surreal day out there in the desert. And in the distance, you can see the Bent Pyramid of Dashur, the site for today's video and in very close proximity to the ammonia manufacturing facility. And this is exactly how it is done today, where your ammonium bicarbonate or urea plant is located beside the ammonia plant, and it utilizes the ammonia product and CO2 byproducts to create ammonium bicarbonate. And the exact same methodology was implemented, or rather developed, by this ancient civilization. And here is a review of the reaction sequence that produced the ammonia solution. Three chambers that transformed the methane from the step pyramid into nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide being removed in the second stage of the reforming process and the nitrogen and hydrogen being transformed into an aqueous ammonia solution in the final synthesis chamber that you can see here. And here is the product gaseous ammonia dissolved in water and aqueous ammonia solution. I mentioned this before in the previous episode, but it is worth reiterating that ammonia and ammonia based fertilizers are possibly the most important chemicals that have ever been discovered or synthesized on the face of the planet. We owe our modern ability to produce agriculture on an industrial scale to ammonia based fertilizers. And our civilization would not exist in our current state without ammonia-based fertilizers. And as I've alluded to in the previous episode, it is possible that the origin of the process to manufacture these chemicals on an industrial scale may have been derived directly from the Egyptian pyramids. So now that brings us to the Bent Pyramid, and I'll go directly to a quote from the book that this civilization, quote, understood that the ammonia being manufactured in the Red Pyramid would present many challenges from long distance transportation to storage and application. Before being suitable for these purposes, the gaseous and dissolved forms of ammonia required conversion into a solid state chemical. The Bent Pyramid, which you can see here, was therefore constructed alongside the Red Pyramid. 
capitalizing on the proximity of the two facilities for the production of this more practical compound solid ammonium bicarbonate. And here is the upper reaction chamber and lower separation chambers of the bent pyramid. Inside the upper reaction chamber, the CO2 byproduct from the red pyramid was being percolated up through this aqueous ammonia solution, which produces ammonium bicarbonate, which was then separated in the lower chambers and removed from the structure in a slurry. That slurry was then dried, leaving solid ammonium bicarbonate, which you can see here. Now this is urea, which has mostly replaced ammonium bicarbonate in today's chemical manufacturing process. It is a more complex and challenging chemical to produce. However, as I have alluded to before, the function of the Egyptian pyramids is more complex than I have revealed thus far. So for now, we will stick to calling it ammonium bicarbonate and stay tuned. So that ammonium bicarbonate was indeed utilized as fertilizer for the production of crops across the entire Sahara during the time frame when that area was experiencing significant rainfall and was designated for agriculture and domesticated cattle. The primary focus of this ancient civilization would have been agriculture. You have to feed all the people. So they engineered structures that could produce chemicals that had the power to transform regions that couldn't previously sustain crop growth and increase the yield of their crops. So you can imagine the importance of ammonia to this ancient civilization. Hence, the deification of Ammon. Now recall from previous episodes that the etymology of the word ammonia is directly related to the Egyptian god Ammon. Well, I would propose that Ammon was perhaps the original name of this chemical, which came to be symbolized and deified by the later dynastic Egyptian civilization, only to be understood as initiates as the immensely valuable chemical ammonia, just as I have explained before about the scarab and bull symbols. Now that your minds are completely blown, I will be explaining all of the esoteric symbolism that you can see here in a later episode. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a god, but rather a depiction of a chemical. So subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and stay tuned. Next up, we have application number two, which is for manufacturing ceramics and plasters, which was clearly a huge industry in ancient Egypt. And you can see here some of the beautiful blue faience glass from the Egyptian museum, or rather faience ceramics. And these are some of my favorite pieces, and the blue is just unbelievably captivating. I love seeing these small pieces, amazing treasures from the ancient world, all wrapped up in ancient chemistry. Next up, application number three, the baking industry. So as I've mentioned before, you got to feed all these people. And ammonium bicarbonate is utilized as a leavening agent in making breads, etc. So ammonium bicarbonate has a very unique and useful property in that it produces bubbles as the molecule breaks down, releasing the ammonia and carbon dioxide gases, which makes for breads full of little air pockets. However, this same property has an even more fascinating application in the realm of chemical engineering. Just a quick reminder that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at the Land of Chem. Thank you so much to everyone that's purchased a t-shirt. Seems like everyone is liking these designs as much as I love them. I have these shirts in pretty much every color and every single design and I wear one almost every single day. Link in the video description below. And of course, limited first edition print copies of the book. The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, also now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. All these orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. And last but not least, that brings us to application number four. So ammonium bicarbonate is used for the production of activated carbon and catalysts. Now, when it comes to these two substances, the more porous, the more reactive, and the same property of ammonium bicarbonate to produce air pockets in breads is also used to manufacture highly porous activated carbon and catalyst. These pores 
exponentially increased surface area and the efficacy of the material. And I won't spoil all the surprises at this point, but I hope everyone knows that one application of activated carbon is to purify water. And you can see here the tiny pores in this catalyst material, which are the same that you would find in activated carbon. Now, the Egyptian pyramids didn't use catalyst in the same way that we are today. However, these reactions were catalyzed by several different factors, one of which is related to the exotic metal compounds found in the chemical analysis of the Red Pyramid. And you can see here that this catalyst is made of a porous carbon lattice infused with rare metallic sulfide compounds. Sound familiar? This is just the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 44, the Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Engineering Fertilizers Part 2. So in the next video, we will be moving to the Giza Plateau and discussing the applications for the sulfuric acid solution that was once being produced inside of the Great Pyramid. This is another must-watch episode. So if you're watching and you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you get noticed when the new videos premiere every single week. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. If you want to help support the channel, www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book. Grab yourself a t-shirt. Also, follow me on Instagram at The Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time.